Hello, I'm the art teacher. Today I'm going to teach a lesson that I've been teaching my fifth graders. It's some really fancy cup and saucers. I just call it cup and saucers. Folk art really. Folk art with cup and saucers. I got the idea when I saw something on Pinterest. I saw something like this. Some of you may have seen something like this before as well. Let me zoom in a little closer. Funny cups they call it. Um, and then I was, I was really impressed with the, uh, the work that they were doing and found out that the artist was Heather Galler. Uh, I think she's in New York. She's a local in New York. She was a local folk artist. And a folk art is when someone is not um, um, professionally trained. Um, she like basically trained herself and she's done amazing, amazing artwork. So if you ever, um, if you want to look up somebody, look up Heather Galler. And she does way more than cups, way more. Uh, so you should look her up. In any case, we're going to do something like this. And what's really nice is with folk art, it doesn't have to be perfect. Matter of fact, if it's not perfect, which makes it perfect. So that's the way we're going to work with that. So to start this off, I am going to go with um, a piece of square paper. It doesn't matter what size. It could be uh, square, rectangular, doesn't matter. And how I'm going to do this is, I find the middle of the paper, which is right about here. And I want my cup to be a little, my top of my cup to be a little bit above that. So I can start up here. And up right there, since the cup is going to be the major part of this picture, um, I want it to be a big cup. So right there, since that's the middle, go up a little bit, I'm going to draw an oval. Just like that. Now once I draw an oval, then I'm going to draw the sides that come down. Now you could study some cups and there's so many different ways you can draw a cup. I'm trying to get the same. Um, do the best you can and whatever you do, if one side's a little off than the other, it's perfectly okay. It really falls into the category of folk art. Then when you get to the bottom, you're going to make another curve, but that curve is going to mimic this curve. It's going to copy this curve. So I try to make another curve, which it might, it might not work. Now I'm going to put the cup handle on this side. So I'm going to do two letter C's, one large, one small, but they're going to be backwards. I start here and I come down right like that. Now you can make these not like C's. You can make it come down further. You can make it all sorts of fancy. I'm just going to do it something simple. And then a small one on the inside. And there's my handle. And now for my saucer, I'm going to start up here just about a half inch right there. I'm going to come out a little bit, curve around. I'm going to stop, come around this side, do the same thing. When I do this side and then I do the left side, then I do the right side, it kind of makes it, to me, it makes it easier for me. And then I connect them. That's the inside of the saucer. So now I'm going to do the outside of the saucer. Same thing. Comes out. I'm going to do the same thing over here. It's not perfect. Not supposed to be. Now, I want the table separate from the wall. This is important. So you have to choose somewhere where this horizontal line is going to divide this whole paper. You could do it right in the middle or you could do it a little lower, but you can't do it too much lower. I have had some students who actually did a curve like it was on a curved table. That makes it pretty interesting as well. I'm going to do mine straight and I think I'm going to do mine right about here. I'm going to go this way. You could get a ruler if you wanted to. There we go. So now I have my cup, my wall, my table. Now, since the, um, um, Heather Galler's um, pictures with her cups are full of patterns. Pattern is a principle of design. And she uses color and she uses lines and she uses uh, shapes, mostly color and shapes. In some of her pictures, line plays a big, uh, a big part too. Oh, if you want to have something in your cup, you would do this. 
you would draw another curve line right there at the very top. And that shows you that you actually have something in your cup, hot cocoa, um, tea, coffee, something hot. And to show that it's hot, you can draw these curve lines like this. There. So now I have these, this steam coming up here. So since I'm going to make this full of pattern, I'm going to choose one type of pattern for the wall, a different type of pattern for the table, and a different type of pattern for the cup itself. And if you use a ruler, depending if you're using straight lines or not, um, you could do this as well. For instance, I could place my ruler here and just draw by tracing it. But when I get to the cup, I'm going to stop. You'll notice that I did go through the steam. You don't have to. You could not go through the steam, just like I'm not going through the cup. Here we go. Notice how I stopped and started right there. So you could see it going, uh, looking through that little opening of the, the handle. So this part here is going to be stripes. Now I've got to come up with something for the tablecloth. The tablecloth, I could either hand draw uh, something or I could trace something. Uh, in this case, oh, I could do even like spots if you wanted to. So something like this. I could take a glue stick and just put one here. And then maybe another one over here. And since I want it to be like on my table, I could actually put a half one here. Kind of doing this randomly. Put one right there with the coffee cup. I think it look, makes it look more interesting when you do something like that. Not make it perfect all the time. Like lining up. That type of thing. A little randomness I think works really well. Maybe just a, just a little smidgy there. There we go. Another one up here. And if you want to get really detailed, you can. Um, it's This is really good for those people who would like to get detailed uh, or those people who don't want to be de so detailed. And one more right there. There. So now I have my wall with stripes, my tablecloth with spots, now I have to come up with something for my cup. Well, let's see if I do this. If I do another line that matches the, t the cup here, I could make my cup have a line at the top and a line at the bottom. And I could put uh, a stripe right in the middle, but it's gonna be curved. But you say, well, didn't you don't you want these to be different from the ones back here? Yes. So I get to come actually I just thought about this. How about if I combine the stripes and the circles? Or that may be too much. And if you think it is, then just do something totally different, another shape, like triangle. I got some triangles going here. Just like that. And of course, that one is going up there. Uh, and this bottom piece here, uh, I can do uh, vertical lines. Just a few vertical lines, little patterns. Whatever strikes your fancy. Something like that. And for the uh, um, little saucer there, you could have it just plain. I could just color this in one color and that another color, or I could actually put a pattern there. But for the sake of this, making it go a little faster, I'm just going to leave it like it is. Now you take a black crayon, black crayon that I have here, and you start tracing everything really hard. Hold the crayon close to the tip so you don't break the crayon, and you just draw really hard. And you do that over absolutely everything. 
100% absolutely over everything. And I actually have uh, some pictures already done, so it'll save some time. Here's one I did. You can see how, um, I, with no colors at all, you can see that I've used lines and shapes to create a lot of pattern. So I'm using my elements of art, lines and shapes, to create pattern, which is a principle of design. And here's another one I made. Here's I did almost like the opposite. I got your vertical lines here. Uh, I got your, my spots in the background. And I've got my coffee cup, which doesn't really have a lot of pattern to it. But I do have this uh, tea bag here. And I kind of threw in a, a spoon. So there's lots of things you can do with there. Now, uh, I'm going to be uh, um, painting my, uh, the ones for my um, fifth graders. I'm teaching fifth graders this. But you can actually do it with cut paper. I did this one with cut paper. No painting, no coloring sticks, no crayons. It's all just cut paper. Uh, I did do another one with coloring sticks. And as you can see, this one's colored in. And you have lines, shapes, and color, elements of art, to create the principle of design called pattern. Now this is part one. Part two is when I actually show my fifth graders how to paint with watercolor, uh, I mean, it's not watercolor, uh, temper paint cakes. Temper paint cakes. So this is part one. Painting will be part two. Okay, look forward to seeing you on the part two.